Christian Bale is an Aquarius. That is the opposite of Leo. Leo rules egotism, whereas Aquarius rules collectivism. For Leo, what is good for Leo is what is good. For Aquarius, what's good for the majority or the masses is generally what's good. Keep in mind again that all boomers were born inside a window of time where the planet Pluto, which controls the karmic destiny of a generation, was in the sign of Leo, the most egotistical and selfish sign. I've had arguments with boomers my whole life about everything from 9-11 to Vietnam to how shitty and redundant their cliche-ass impressions of jazz and blues are, and how they think that's Americana and American music, and that's the limitations of American music. When Christian Bale was hired to play Patrick Bateman in American Psycho, he used for inspiration an interview that Tom Cruise did with Rosie O'Donnell. He described Tom Cruise demeanor in the interview as very intense friendliness with nothing behind the eyes. Tom Cruise may be a cancer son, but he is a Leo moon, and you will find many actors have Leo moons, and you will find many narcissists have fire moons, because fire most fundamentally is about the ego. And so when somebody has a fire, ascendant, Mars, Venus, moon, it's likely that they do things for themselves, that their motivating force is what's good for me. Being that America as a country is ruled by Leo, the more that we can understand about Leo, the better. Some Leo moons that have made it to superstardom are Charlize Theron, Megan Fox, Paris Hilton, Julia Roberts, Marilyn Manson, Lana Del Rey, Tom Hanks, Clint Eastwood, and Jane Fonda. I have an Aquarius moon, and so I've dealt with a lot of Leo moons in my life. Leo and Aquarius are two signs that attach to each other like magnets. If you have a Leo sun or an Aquarius sun, I'm willing to bet cash money that you have at least two people in your life that play prominent roles that are the opposite. This axis of Leo to Aquarius is creative, unorthodox, driven, obtuse, and stubborn. I have a relative, God bless her soul, whom I love, who voted for Trump. Her rationale is that Jesus supports people like Trump. This is a popular rationale in the United States for some bizarre reason. This person has a Leo Mars. I propose to her a conundrum that I often do regarding Christian dogma. I asked her, do you think that Jesus believed that the earth was flat? I mean, everybody else at the time believed the earth was flat. But Jesus is supposed to be omnipotent and the son of God, so he should have awareness that other people don't. If Jesus did not think the earth was flat, why didn't he just say so? Because that would prove his omniscience. If he did think the earth was flat, what kind of savior doesn't even have basic understanding of science? If I was Jesus and I was trying to prove to everybody that I was the son of God, I would simply explain scientific concepts that they weren't ready for, and that way, 100, 200, 500 years from then, everyone would know that I was in fact omniscient, because I knew things that nobody knew from my time. Sometimes that's kind of what it feels like knowing so much about astrology in this time, but I digress. My relative's response to that question was, no, no, everybody did not think the earth was flat at the time of Jesus. And I was like, dude, yes, they did. It wasn't until the 5th century that people even alluded that there was a spherical Earth, and they didn't prove it until after that. But she's like, are you sure? Are you sure that people didn't think the Earth was round? And that is what you're dealing with, with American Christians and Trump supporters. People who are like really unsure about whether people thought the Earth was flat in the time of Jesus. In Isaiah 11:12 and Revelation 7:1. They refer to the four corners of the earth, implying that the earth is essentially a square. Job 38.12 refers to the dawn seizing the edges of the earth, and earth taking shape like clay under a seal. Isaiah 4.22, referring to God, states, He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. The old modality of looking at the earth is that it was a flat, geographical body 
with a firmament above it, and then above that, the heavens, okay? All Abrahamic religions believed that modality, and that modality is patently wrong. Yet people are choosing their political leaders with their fingers on the button for nuclear weapons based on this 2,000-year-old book. A book, by the way, that the man cannot cite a single passage from. Okay. You mentioned the Bible. You've been talking about how it's your favorite book. And you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, there's I don't no want to get into a, There's no, no I, verse I, that means I a lot just, to you that you think about or cite? The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like? No, I don't want to do that. You're I mean, an Old okay. Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible, the whole Bible is an incredible, I joke uh, very much so. They always hold up the art of the deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. Let's take a look at the actual class who votes for and gets Trump elected. Dan Pena, born August 10th, 1945, Leo, is an American businessman. Pena began his career as a financial analyst on Wall Street. He went on to become president of Great Western Resources Incorporated, a Houston-based oil company listed on the London Stock Exchange in 1984. In 1984, Pena bought Guthrie Castle in Angus, Scotland, from which he has operated several businesses. This man owns a castle, okay? Now, for the guys in the room, put your hands up like this and look at your left hand. Don't, don't tell me, just look at your left hand. And if your finger, if this finger isn't longer than this finger, you squat the pee. Okay. okay, this isn't Dan's measurement. This is proven it's a testosterone test. He's a Leo sun and a Taurus moon. People often subconsciously seek out their moon sign in the world. That is to say, if you have a cancer moon, you'll seek a cancer sun person to partner with. Like Kurt Cobain, a cancer moon, sought Courtney Love, a cancer sun. John Lennon, an Aquarius moon, seems like he could get any screaming girl anywhere in the world. And so people are often taken aback that he would choose an unglamorous avant-garde artist. This is not shocking at all for me because I know that John was an Aquarius moon and Yoko is an Aquarius sun and Aquarius rules the avant-garde. And so Dan Pena has one Gen Xer he really likes and that is Brian Rose who hosts a podcast called London Real. Brian Rose is a Taurus sun who had also worked on Wall Street. Ergo, Dan Pena has a Taurus moon, likes a Taurus sun. Taurus rules money. Capiche? Dan Pena is extremely pro-Trump, despite living in another country. For those who don't know, even if you live in another country, you still pay American taxes and vote in American elections. Many rich guys do not live in America anymore, but still sway elections in favor of hypercapitalism because it suits their tax needs. Let's look at another hyper-rich dude, one of the pioneers of the hedge fund model, Doug Casey. Guess his son. That's right, it's Taurus. He calls all millennials stupid for wanting anything less than a Trump presidency and uses words like snowflake and all that psychopathic narcissist talk, comparing races to dog breeds, etc. But uh, it's a fact. You know, people are like dogs. I don't know too much about kids. and I've never had any kids to my knowledge. And <laughs> the, the, the thing, so I don't know as much about people, as I, but I, I know a lot about horses and dogs. Let me talk about dogs, uh, because everybody's had a dog. Um, races of people are exactly analogous uh, to breeds of dogs. So let's take a look at these things. Greyhounds and Shih Tzus. Who's going to win the race? Um, two things are going to kill it. Virtual reality. I think within 10 years, you're going to be able to step into your virtual reality suit, which will stimulate all the nerves in your whole body. You'll see, you'll hear, you'll feel, you'll smell, you'll touch. Computer technology will be so good, you'll step into that suit, 
and it'll be everything you ever wanted and dreamed of, which is the way I view it. Most of these leftists are actually crazy. I mean, they're actually bonkers. Listen, the only equality is in the grave. What Doug Casey, who has lived in a hundred plus countries, is describing here, with individuated files or groups living together, is the age of Aquarius, for which me started with the Masonic ritual and not terrorist attack that was September 11th, 2001. I propose that conservative fiscal mentality is like an alien disease, a cosmic cope for some deeper truth that they must psychologically create a block for, lest they become self-aware like the Terminator and kill themselves. Take a look at this video in which Charlie Kirk, conservative poster boy and Reagan era cosplayer, attempts to shoot down a young college student doing exactly what you're supposed to do in college, develop critical thinking skills. The Constitution's the best document in political history. I Greatest think. political document ever. There written. you go. Thank you. Um, I, I want to know how is it possible to believe that when it's based on racist principles? They describe uh, indigenous peoples as merciless Indian savages. Uh, they don't describe African Americans as full people, and they don't even recognize other people of color and other uh, minority, minorities that we see today. So I just want to know how you think it's possible to believe that's such a great document we're Thank founded Thank you for upon. the question. Where does it say that in the document? No, no, keeper. Where, where does it say that in the document? I'm sorry, what? Where does it say what you said in the actual document? Um, uh, I'm not entirely sure, it but... It doesn't. No, no, uh, it... She tried to call the Constitution racist, but when asked to back it up, she had no sources. <laughs> LOL. If you're willing, if you're willing to... In the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson, in fact, says, quote, he has excited domestic insurrections among us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, whose known rule of warfare is an indistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. Furthermore, the three-fifths compromise was an agreement reached at the 1787 Constitutional Convention that determined how to count enslaved people for taxation and representation in Congress. The compromise stated that three out of every five enslaved people would count towards a state's population. In other words, one black vote was worth three-fifths of what a white vote was. My best friend growing up was a Leo Moon, and he was raised by some sociopathic Christians who raised him in a cult where men raped him, where men uh, who claimed to be Christian and Republican raped him. And uh, so he has like a blind spot. He has like a trauma-based blind spot. And uh, he joined the army and he ended up in Texas and being a Republican as studies show that there's a correlation between trauma and conservatism. Because if you've been traumatized enough by people's behavior, you want up and out and you want to be in a redlined suburb and away from all of people's games and their like naughty behavior and their psychological games, etc., etc. But in the case of my friend here, a Leo moon, as I am an Aquarius moon again, he became very adversarial towards me once he did that leap, because just like how boomers generally hate me, people's parents usually hate me. It's not hard for me to dismantle his whole life and how it came to be, and how he's a sellout piece of shit, you know. His Republican mom, who turned a blind eye to her own child being raped by men, of course loves money, as all Republican women do. Thinks that if she has more money, she's flexing on everybody around her. And childhood rape be damned. And he married someone of the same astrological sign, late Libra, who has exactly the same kind of disposition. When they had a child together, she was posting all kinds of pics of the child on Instagram, and he was like, I don't think I want pictures of my child on Instagram. And she was like, if we don't put pictures of our child on Instagram, how will people know what our lives are like? That's the mentality of that kind of Christian, Republican, redline suburb, racist, selfish, materialistic, egoistic psychopath. And he was, in fact, diagnosed with literal psychopathy in the army. That did not stop the army from putting him in a forward operating base in Afghanistan. And when he came back from Afghanistan, 
his Fox News watching father insisted that Trump said this and Trump said that and Trump knows about Afghanistan. And he was like, Dad, I was in Afghanistan. Let me tell you what it's actually like there. There are tribes of people with no name who protect poppy fields because they're protecting heroin trade for the CIA. And his dad said, son, uh, you don't know about Afghanistan the way that Trump does because that's how Republicans are. You could go to Afghanistan. You could wear the army outfit. You could be protecting the poppies yourself, and they would still say, no Fox News says this, and so it's true. They're a scary, dangerous, brainwashed, colonized, mind voter base of psychopaths who have the very convenient psychological widget of a 2,000-year-old magical Jew who lives in the sky who permits them to make moral mistakes as long as they repent and then are forgiven. And those moral mistakes are always abuse of women and children, always sexual abuse for which we're all supposed to turn a blind eye because Jesus this particular mental widget that makes you say, oh no, we shan't discuss the horrors of humanity because we don't want to face them. And then meanwhile, the patriarchs of your community are raping everybody around. Take a poll of women that you know in this country and find out how many have been sexually compromised by somebody with right-wing values with Christian values, and then ask yourself, are those values really rooted in some kind of moral high ground, or are they rooted in creating a kind of umbrella under which disgusting and despicable behavior can be protected?